It was a very, very difficult time. I um, was a child that was born to two wounded parents, and they were wounded children themselves. My mother was uh, 17 and my father was about 19 when they got married. And I came along when, when she was 24 years old. And there was a lot of pain in the house. There were a lot of arguments. He, would, he was very physically abusive and verbally abusive to the both of us. It was, it was really a difficult and, and very hard um, time, especially for a man child. I don't know what it's like for a little girl, but I'm sure it's just as painful. But for a boy child, a man child, to watch his mother being beaten and belittled, it was really, really hard. So I went under the house and I built this little, uh, put some wood up in, in between some of the pillars and built this little uh, safe place for me. And I painted it robin egg blue. I had found some, some paint somewhere, painted it blue, and I would sit in this room and I would let my imagination take me to other places. I would, I would just be somewhere running through grass and trees while I'm listening to all of the pain and all of the heartache up above me in the floorboards. So it was a very difficult time. But the beauty in that moment, and I say this to people all the time, is that I, I know that all things work together for your good. When I, when I am writing a script or a movie or writing the have and have nots or if, if Love You is wrong or writing any of these shows or movies, in my imagination, I go to a place where I'm in that world. And that was formed and born inside of all that pain. So the little boy's imagination is where the man goes now to, to feed his dreams. So it's a beautiful thing when you know that all things are gonna to work together for your good. After watching the Oprah Winfrey show, she said it was cathartic to write things down. Now, I didn't know what cathartic meant, so I had to go find a dictionary, <laughs> substandard high school. I went and found a dictionary and I started writing things down in this journal and I was using different characters' names because if someone found it, I didn't want them to know that I had been through the things that I was talking about. I was talking about adult survivors of child abuse at the time. So in 1993 or so, I moved to Atlanta. I moved in 92, in 93 I decided to put the play up, worked, saved money, uh, my tax returns from H&R Block, did everything I could to put this show up. And uh, I spent all my money, there was a 200 seat theater, I thought we would do all of these different shows over the weekend and 1,200 people would show up and only 30 did. So I lost everything I had, uh, my car payment, everything was tied up in it. And it was a very, very difficult time because I know I felt led to do this show about adult survivors of child abuse who had forgiven their abusers. I, I, out of the 30 people, and I knew every one of them in the room, uh, <laughs> there was somebody who said, this really touched me and I want to invest. That's how you know when God is doing something for you because he'll put you on a path and just when you think you're at the end, somebody or someone will show up and say, hey, here, here's, here's another opportunity over here. So from about uh, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, we did this play once a year everywhere uh, in these little small towns outside of Atlanta and they never worked. They never worked. Every time I'd go, something would happen. I'd go get a job and I'd go, you know, after I'd work on the job, for a couple of weeks, I get a call saying, hey Tyler, we want to try the play somewhere else. And I go to my boss and I say, listen, I, I, I need two weeks off to go do this play. He's like, man, you've just been working here two weeks. How do you think you can get two weeks off? And I go back to my desk and I sit and I pray and I was like, okay God, I know I just got this job. I know I just did the play, it didn't work. I got another opportunity here. If this is you telling me, make it plain, what should I do? And I hear this voice say, quit. So there I was. Stepping out on faith, leaving a job that I knew that this money was going to come in from week to week to go out and do this play because I heard the voice of God. So I remember every time I'd go out to do the show, it wouldn't work. It wasn't successful. And I'm like, God, I know you told me to do this. And when I'd pray, I'd hear nothing. That same voice that said, quit, I heard nothing, which was a very difficult time for me. Very difficult. And I remember the, the time that you're talking about it was in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I had gotten another job, because I had more jobs. Man, I had about 20 jobs during this time. I'd gotten another job, asked the boss, he said no, I heard the voice quit. I go out, do the show, and I'm driving there, and there's a hurricane headed toward Spartanburg. Hurricane. I'm like, now God, I know you control the wind and the, the waves, but you told me to quit, and now nobody's gonna show up. So I lost everything. Homeless, sleeping in my car, following God. When you follow God, sometimes things get tough, they get tight, but if you keep pushing just on the other side and when you think it's the darkest, something miraculous will happen that will change your life. Something will open up that will blow your mind. So in 1998, and I, and I got an opportunity to do the show again, and it was at the House of Blues, and 
I was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna do like my mother said, my mother who loved me dearly, loved me dearly. So we were sitting in the house and she was saying, listen, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of you doing these plays, just stop it, just stop it. I'm tired of you crying about it. And the woman loved me, loved me, loved me more than anything. She said, you know what, just give it up. Just go get your job working at the phone company. You're never gonna make it with these plays. Just go get a job at the phone company. I was sitting there in tears when she was saying it to me. She turned around and she saw me because I was sitting behind her on the sofa and the blood drained from her face. And she said, baby, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't know how important this was for you. But what I want you to understand is that I don't care how many people love you and encourage you or the ones that try to tear you down or destroy you. When God has a dream for you, it is your dream, your dream your dream and there are people who love you who would think that they're saying the right things to you to try to protect you or there are people that have been, been that have been in your lives and watch you grow up and they don't know what God has put down inside of you because they think they're too familiar with you but what you have to understand is when God has something for you you have to go for it fully fully so so that's what I did I did the show and I walk in and I'm mad and I'm angry because all those years those seven years of me trying to get this play up nothing was happening God would tell me to quit, then he'd get me out there and he'd leave me. You'd leave me out here by myself. God, where are you? You wouldn't even talk to me during these dark times. So I was mad, I was done. I go and I do the show and I'm complaining all the way. I'm there putting on my makeup, getting ready to play the old man Joe and I've got an attitude. I'm just mad, I'm upset. I'm like, I don't wanna do this. And I hear that voice, that one that told me to quit, say, shut up. And he said, get up and look out the window. I got up and looked out of this little dusty window and there was a line around the corner trying to get in the building. And the place sold out over and over and over again. And I said, God, where were you in all those times? He said, I was proving you to see that you would honor this, that you would do the right thing with it. Sometimes when you're not hearing from God, God is trying to see what you're gonna do in the situation that you're in. And it turned out to be an incredible moment that has taken me from that sold out house all the way until every show that we've done. It's been incredible. It's been miraculous. It's been nothing but God. And I'm grateful from the time when I started doing these shows to the time when they started to take off. What broke in the moment? Well, here I was with this script about adult survivors of child abuse whose, whose parents had abused them. And the, the characters in the show that I had written from my own mind had forgiven their abusers, but I hadn't forgiven my father. So one day we were on the phone before the show sold out, before everything changed, we were on the phone and I got a chance to just say everything that was on my mind because I wasn't the little boy anymore. I was a six foot six man and I wasn't afraid. And I started saying everything that I needed to say to him. And the things that came out of my mouth blew my mind. But at the end of it, what I heard was, I forgive you. I said, I forgive you to him. And something shifted in me, something shifted. Let me tell you something, forgiveness is so incredibly powerful. Forgiveness is not for the other person, it is for you. There are people living their lives who've done you wrong, they are happy walking down the street not even thinking about you, but there you are holding on to unforgiveness. When I forgave this man, I found myself trying to, I was lost for a second because my entire fuel was based on the negativity of not forgiving him. But once I forgave him, I had to find a way to find another source of fuel. So the negativity and all the darkness that I'd been through was the source. Now I needed a more positive source. Now I needed a good source, a pure source. It's like, it's like taking a car that runs on diesel and putting regular gasoline in it. And then all of a sudden you say drive and something's gonna go wrong. So you have to rework all the components inside of your mind to be able to understand how to function in positivity. So that shift for me was so incredible. Forgiveness did all of that for me and the minute I did that, the minute I started to function and doing the right thing and being positive, I went from nobody coming to the show to not having enough seats for the people to get into the places. Yeah, somebody, I, this shocked a few people. They said, let's talk about your failures. I said, I don't have any. And, and I tell you why, I tell you why I say that. I tell you why I say that. Because when you know that everything in your life is gonna work together for your good, Listen, I look, I look back on all the things in my life that I thought that should have been a failure, that should have been a failure, that should have been, but when I really analyzed it, I realized those were teaching moments, those were molding moments, those were moving moments. And I realized, had that not happened, I wouldn't have been ready for this moment. Or had that situation not gone on, I wouldn't have been ready to go here. Had I not been able to live at that altitude, I wouldn't have been able to stand at this altitude. So what happened to me, 
As I look back on all those moments, I, could, I don't call them failures. I call them the grace of God because it had brought me right where I needed to be. Listen, don't give up. Don't, I know this sounds simple, but don't give up. If you go to bed with it and you wake up with it and you can't shake it, you go get a job and that dream is still in the back of your head. You, you're working for somebody else, but that dream is still in the back of your head. You're getting up every morning, five in the morning, going on somebody else's job. Let me tell you something, honor that person that you're working for. Listen, listen, because when, you when, you, when you're when you faithful over someone else's, God will give you your own. So make sure you honor the person that you're working for. But at, but at the same time, don't give up. The mantra at the studio, at my studio is, a place where even dreams believe. And when you want to walk away from it, you still dream. That's God telling you to keep going. And if I can tell you anything else, please keep going. There are people who, whose lives and destiny are tied into you. Just think, had you stopped, all of these people, where would we be going to worship and hear a positive message? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So don't stop. Keep going, no matter what anybody says, you are worth it. And here's the thing about worthy, get to worthy. Whatever you do, get to worthy. What does that mean? Understand that you are worth it. You deserve the good things. If God said it, you deserve it, and he did. His thoughts of you are pure, and he wants to give you a hope. Do you ever find yourself in a moment where everything is going great, and then all of a sudden you get anxiety about something? I found myself having great anxiety about being able to fly. I was a very, very nervous flyer. You know, coming from a kid who had nothing, who had never been on a plane to 20-something years old, putting me on my first plane, and I didn't understand it. I was scared to death. Get to my seat, we take off, flight attendant come on and say the stuff they say. I didn't hear none of it. I was just holding on, holding on, holding on. We take off, I'm white knuckled. You have not seen white knuckles until you see a black man with white knuckles holding on to something. So there I was, in demand, but afraid to fly. So I wanted to talk to you about anxiety, like those of you who are dealing with things, walking through situations in this life, you're married, things are going great, then all of a sudden something happens. Person wants a divorce. You thought you would live your life forever with this person and all of a sudden the very person that you thought would be there forever is about to leave and you see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, but you're wondering, are you the sacrifice? You've got children that you're raising and everything seemed to be fine when they were younger, but now they're at a place where they're a little bit older and they're, they're doing things that you couldn't even imagine. And you're worried. They've got addictions, they've got things going on and you're wondering, God, what is going on? You see the knife, you see the wood, you see the fire, but where's the sacrifice? Those dreamers in here who are trying to build a dream. God, what is going on in this moment? What is going on? What is happening right now? I've been there. It's a very difficult place when you know that you've got anxiety all over you. So as I look at this text and I see Isaac wondering, is he the sacrifice? I came here to tell you some good news. If you are in this place and you are wondering if you are the sacrifice, I came to tell you that you are not. You are not the sacrifice. God did not bring you this far to leave you. You are not about to die. You are not about to lose everything. You are not the sacrifice. How do I know that? In the very next verse, Abraham answers Isaac. He says, God himself will provide the sacrifice. Climb and maintain. The climbing is the prayer and the worship is maintaining. So what do you do with anxiety? You climb and maintain. 